development to Guam, Micronesia, and the CNMI. Cars Plus, Guam's leader in sustainability and electric vehicles. Learn more at carsplusguam.com. McDonald's of Guam, I'm loving it, and King's Restaurant, serving your local breakfast, lunch, and dinner favorites for over 45 years. Ahead on Your News Leader, thousands came out for the primary to select who they want to advance to the general election in November. Nestor Lakanto with the recap. Plus, dozens of Chinese nationals illegally sneaking into Guam for several months. Local authorities are now making more arrests. And a historic moment to watch NASA's mission to the moon. Will we be able to see anything in our skies? Our story with a local forecaster coming up. Half a day and good evening, everyone. Welcome to KUAM News Primetime. I'm Nick Delgado. And I'm Hannah Devonzo. Thanks for tuning in and starting the week off with us. The primary is over, now setting the stage for the November 8th general election. Facing off is Governor Lou Leon Guerrero and Lieutenant Governor Josh Tenorio on the Democratic ticket. And former Governor Felix Camacho and Senator Tony, Tony Atta for the GOP. Now, 71 days away until the, we find out who will be the victors? Nestor Lecanto has our top story. The all-in team of Lou and Josh took the lead from the outset in the Democratic primary and held on to a comfortable margin throughout the night. It's very humbling and such an honor to be with uh, our supporters and their great commitment uh, to move forward our agenda and their belief in our leadership and our um, agenda. Meanwhile, the Republican team of Felix and Tony ran uncontested, needing only to meet the minimum required votes to proceed into the general election. So again, people, please come out. Make a difference. You know, don't sit on the sidelines. Get involved. Register and vote because we're now moving into the general election. And so it's going to be uh, the, the decisions that are made on who's going to lead our island over the next four years uh, is, is critically important at this very tumultuous, chaotic time. And as the focus shifts to the general election, both sides are reaching out to supporters of Delegate Michael San Nicolas and running mate Sabrina Salas Matanani. In a news release, Camacho said, Despite the sting of defeat, we know that your heart and vision was to bring good things to our island, and we want to invite you to come and join our Camacho Ada team. Likewise, Democratic Party Chairman Tony Babauta called on Democrats to come together. You know, it's, it's always helpful uh, when the leaders of, of whatever particular campaign um, kind of indicate to the followers and you know that we're going to stay unified with uh, with the Democrats or, or with whatever party um, but you know the reality is uh, the the salt of the earth folks are our grassroots are you know we, we work together some elections and we work against each other uh, in other elections the the primary election day itself is really an opportune time for the the uh, uh, for camps to start talking to each other again. But Sir Nicholas is not yet ready to disclose his plans, issuing only this statement, quote, please give us some time as we reflect on this election in prayer and with our families. We will make a statement on the election and the future afterward. Much love and thanks to all of the voters and our From the Heart volunteers and supporters who made this journey possible. For KUAM News, I'm Nestor Lacanto. And in our continuing coverage, while the gubernatorial race was the focus of this year's primary, there were a couple of other tight races. Here again is our Nestor Lakanto. In the congressional race, Republican Jim Moylan ran uncontested, while former Speaker Judy Wanpat beat out Senator Talena Nelson 9,678 to 7,740 in the Democrat contest. I not only have the experience, the education, the uh, institutional knowledge and have a real deep understanding of how Washington works. I grew up in Washington, went to school there, came home to serve my people. In an even closer contest, though they're not running head to head until the general election, was the race for Attorney General. Incumbent Levin Camacho edging out first elected Attorney General Doug Moylan, 11,285 to 10,967. The pair is already on the offensive. They'll face off Wednesday at a forum sponsored by the Chamber of Commerce. Now here's a look at the top 15 in the legislative races.
The results are unofficial until off-island ballots are received and counted and the Election Commission certifies. For KOAM News, I'm Nestor Lacanto. Thanks, Ness. You can check out the complete results right now on KUAM.com. Well, counting the votes took longer than anticipated. More than 12 hours passed from the moment the polls closed at 8 p.m. Saturday to the time we got the final numbers on Sunday morning. We asked the head of the Election Commission what was the holdup. The ballots were bussed from the 67 precincts to the UOG Fieldhouse, no problems. The volunteers reconciled each ballot to prepare them for the machines. Again, no issues there. Three tabulation machines were up and running, each good to go. But once the boxes got to the tabulators, the line backed up as officials tried to get both the partisan and nonpartisan ballots through each machine. Guam Election Commission Executive Director Maria Pangolinan on why it took so long. You know, that second ballot sheet made it take twice as long. Um, we thought, you know, there were other factors like uh, how soon the precinct officials can get it to us. But as soon as they started coming, it was very fluid. So that second ballot sheet is what I think caused us to take this long. Twice as long as political experts predicted the count would end at least five hours sooner than it did. The second ballot was the nonpartisan race for Attorney General of Guam. Both candidates are running under separate party lines. But Pangolinan says Guam law still forces them to include their race in the primary. What do you think uh, can be done to expedite this process? <laughs> of course, changing the law. That's correct. Change the law. The you know, um, have the have the primary for the, or uh, don't have a primary. You know, just have a primary for the partisan, and that's something operationally that would help us. The lengthy counting period also occurring as only 40 percent of the registered voting population showed up. Pangolinan admitting it's one of the lowest participated primaries ever in Guam's election history. More Chinese nationals continue to get arrested following their illegal entry onto Guam shorelines by boat. Here's more. Authorities have arrested two more Chinese nationals who snuck into Guam illegally by boat from the CNMI. Over the last several months, nine boats filled with passengers have disembarked on Guam shorelines illegally. Spokesperson for the Guam Police Department, Officer Berlin Sevilla. Today we have located two. Xiao Wan Sun, Chinese woman, 41 years of age, and Gan Yu Li, Chinese man, 49 years of age, were arrested on suspicion of failure to acquire clearance requirements, failure to deliver a manifest to a customs officer, and invalid place of unloading. Both will be booked and confined to the Department of Corrections. Since June, they've intercepted 71 passengers and have arrested only four, according to Director of Customs and Quarantine Ike Pareto. Our entry requirements is very specific when it states that for you to come into Guam, you need a departure clearance from the point of origin. They don't have a departure clearance. You're also required to have a passenger manifest. And if you have cargo on board, you are required to report that. Just last week, another boat attempted to enter illegally. They know already that we were waiting for them, so they managed to turn, turn them around. The boat was later intercepted by CNMI law enforcement, and according to Director Pareto, there has been other attempts prevented by the Coast Guard. Police are encouraging the community to report any suspicious activity to CQA at 671-642-8071 or GPD at 671-475-8615. A biker is caught with meth and a gun after leading police on a brief chase through PD on Sunday. 25-year-old Anthony Cruz is charged with possession of a concealed uh, and unregistered firearm without an ID and possession of a Schedule II controlled substance. Court documents state Cruz was going 80 miles per hour on a motorcycle before being stopped. Cruz allegedly admitting to cops he illegally had a gun on him. Authorities found a Glock 17 in his backpack, which he said he bought from a Santa Rita man for 300 bucks. Officers also found two baggies with meth. Cruz was also on pretrial release on a separate ident identity theft case. And still to come on your news leader, a disease still infecting millions globally. Daniel Paris brings us to a weekend conference on tuberculosis. Also, regional news from Tabas Mangotnia. As a special project gets going for fallen veterans in Tinian, keep it here. You're watching KUAM.
The rising cost of living is affecting all of us on Guam. Our administration has expanded a program. We want to pay for your child's daycare up to $675 a month per child. This means more money in your pocket to pay for other expenses like the cost of gas and groceries. The Leon Guerrero Tenorio administration is investing in Guam's future and that starts by supporting our working families. We are all in this together, Guam. This ad is paid for by government funds at the Office of the Governor and the Department of Public Health and Social Services. Hi today, I'm Kilina from Docs Kitty College. And I'm Kristen from Docs Daycare and Preschool. And we are so honored to be caring for the children of Guam. The Governor's Child Care programs help businesses like ours to really focus on the kids. These programs also help nonprofits and after school programs and grandparents and so many families. Visit www.guamchildcare.com to learn more about the Governor's Child Care programs. This ad is paid for with funds administered by DPHSS. Off today, I'm Felix Camacho. Senator Tony Ada and I and our families thank you for voting in the primary election. We've met you. We've heard you. We've felt your pain regarding COVID, isolation, separation, illness, death, lost jobs, businesses closed. The general election on November 8th is a time of decision. The destiny and future of our island is at stake. A new season is coming, one of hope, prosperity, justice, and freedom. Get off the sidelines, participate in the process, register to vote, and agree to make a difference. Be a part of this movement. We love you and care about you, and we know that with God, all things are possible. We are proven. You can trust us. Please vote Camacho Ada for governor and lieutenant governor. A new season. Thank you. I'm Felix Camacho, and I approve this message. Subscribe to our KOM News Digest, our weekly email newsletter with all kinds of information straight to your inbox. Just subscribe and we'll make sure to keep you informed and entertained with news from the KOM News team, what to watch on NBC and CBS, and the latest promotions from KOM Communications. Go to KOM.com, click on the newsletter tab at the top of the homepage, register, and you're all set. Brought to you by Uno Go, Guam On Demand. Welcome back to your news leader. Well, a scary moment for a man and a woman in Mighty this afternoon. An explosion. An, ex An explosion in flames coming from that white forerunner just off Route 8. Midday today, near the first Hawaiian bank in Mighty, you see the smoke coming from the burning car. Firefighters responding just before 1 o'clock this afternoon. Officials saying the driver noticed the dark smoke pulled over and got out before the fire. The fire was quickly put out. Fortunately, both occupants got away unharmed. Now to the balancing act. Two days left for the legislature to submit the fiscal year 2023 budget to the governor. Today, senators continued deliberations on miscellaneous spending provisions. Lawmakers also passing a $5 million appropriation from last fiscal year surplus to the hospital. That came from Senator Talena Nelson to recruit and hire physician specialists. Last week, officials from GMH and Public Health were called and to answer more, about, more questions about the specialists still needing. Ahead of the vote, Nelson made her final pitch. I don't know what else I can say, but if you don't think that investing in healthcare specialists to treat the people, to treat our children, to treat those that are suffering from illnesses here on, an, our, on our island so that they don't have to fly thousands of miles to seek care elsewhere. She's a dad. Can you imagine riding in a plane for seven plus hours, sick, the discomfort, the fear of not knowing what's going to happen to you. Just for a second. In other action, senators also approved pay adjustments for non-law enforcement personnel at the Attorney General's office. 
The legislature has until August 31st to submit a spending plan to Adaloo. Over in the Marianas, the NMI government is searching for land to properly honor the fallen veterans in Tinian. Officials are working to establish a veteran cemetery on that island. The new project comes after Deputy Secretary of the VA wrapped his listening tour in the Pacific. Regional correspondent Tomas Manglonia reports. Deputy Secretary of the VA Donald Remy wrapped up his listening tour across the Pacific with a visit to Saipan last week. He met with Sinai Governor Ralph Torres and Delegate Gregorio Sablon. Just to, you know, echo out uh, some of the challenges that our veterans uh, have here, um, one of which um, they have to pay their airfare uh, to go get treatment or check up whether Guam or Hawaii. And that's one of the asks that we've, we asked if they can incorporate their, um, their airfare because it's very difficult for our veterans to be paying $1,000 to Hawaii or even just to go on for a checkup. Torres also shared that the island of Rhoda officially broke ground on a veteran cemetery so that loved ones are able to visit their family who passed away locally. And they're hoping to make that possible on the island of Tinian too. We asked for additional funding uh, to their office. Uh, hopefully uh, we can work that out also on Tinian and we're waiting for uh, a lot to be designated in Tinian. Uh, and hopefully we can move that forward on our veterans um, cemetery. Torres added that they're also working on improving data collection when it comes to veterans on island. Meanwhile, Delegate Sablon, who has been advocating for a community-based outpatient clinic in the Northern Marianas, says he hopes the distance Deputy Secretary Remy traveled was eye-opening to the VA demonstrating just how difficult travel can make access to care. Tomas Manglonia for KUAM News on Saipan. And now to health news and a disease that impacts the masses throughout the world. Our Daniel Perez brings us more from a conference held in Tumon that focuses on tuberculosis. It's still one of the most prevalent diseases around the world as tuberculosis still infects millions of people worldwide. Over the weekend at the Hyatt Resort, the Let's Unite and TB in Guam conference happened. TB program manager Chima Mbakwam. The conference is basically to focus our island healthcare professionals to continue to think about TB after COVID-19. With the statistics that were and the data that was presented today, it's obvious that we're seeing a decline in TB cases in the world generally. But there is a question about is it a true decline due to interventions that are going on or is it a decline due to the effects of COVID and also is it a decline based on the fact that we are under diagnosing TB and under reporting TB. Speakers at the conference sharing his knowledge on what he knows about the disease. I spoke on two topics. The first one was I gave um, an overview about TB in the US in the Pacific Islands and in Guam. And we did a comparison to show what the cases are and also look at the cost of treating TB and also the cost saving measures that the public health department has in place to um, treat TB. And then the second one is the le leveraging our partnership and um, involving stakeholders in our aim um, to drive TB down in Guam. Another guest speaker present at the TB conference was TB nurse consultant Nadia Sabwala, who shed light on what she spoke on at the event. Talking about leveraging partnerships and stakeholder involvement, uh, TB anywhere is TB everywhere, and so it's important that we work together to eliminate TB. Sabwala is also part of the National TB Controllers Association, where their goal is to provide support to all the different TB programs in the states to move toward the elimination of the disease. The second talk is about uh, multidrug resistant TB, uh, the new and emerging uh, treatment, the old treatment for multidrug resistant TB was uh, sometimes uh, 18 months, sometimes 24, sometimes 36. There's a newer regimen, which is only six months. And so I'm going to be talking about the nursing implications when we use that treatment uh, for our TB patients. The conference also had experts that spoke on TB diagnosis, latent TB treatment, and new cutting edge science in place for TB treatments and diagnosis. Daniel Perez reporting for KUAM News. Thanks, Daniel. Well, the countdown for the Artemis 1 mission to the moon has begun. The launch involving the most powerful rocket used in NASA history. 
While this part of the mission will not include any crew members, the nation and the world is watching closely and thinking back to the day man first set foot on the moon more than 50 years ago. The view from the Kennedy Space Center. Three, two, one, mission. And liftoff. Once liftoff, Artemis 1 will push its Orion capsule toward the moon, going on a three-week orbit before returning and splashing down in the Pacific Ocean. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. It's said to be NASA's most ambitious moonshot since the Apollo era. It's pretty interesting, yeah, it's like a, you know, a big event that's, you know, that's, like I said, it's one of the biggest rockets they've ever launched, so it'd be pretty fascinating to see. Mike Zeobro is a lead forecaster with the National Weather Service in Guam. He recalls the Apollo mission and watching it from his Massachusetts home with family when he was only 10 years old. I followed it uh, pretty religiously. The blast off was pretty interesting and then, you know, because uh, and I was up from the East Coast, so it was at, late at night when they went on the moon and that was pretty interesting. And, you know, you saw them going on the moon and uh, it was just, you know, and, uh, Pretty fascinating. I wish we could see something with that, but uh, listening to that, every astronaut guy, it sounds like they go uh, at the same almost uh, latitude as when they launch, which would be north of us. And uh, I don't know if you'd see anything. The Artemis mission this time around will be crewless. The first part of the groundbreaking mission is important for the crew's scheduled flight in 2024, followed by a moon landing later this decade. The launch today is a moment that takes Zeobro back to his childhood. That does feel like, I guess, a special day like that. And, uh, but uh, like I said, I always watch uh, every, uh, even the more mundane SpaceX launches, the, the, when they launch their little uh, uh, Falcon 9, I still think that's exciting because, uh, uh, you know, it's just something to see them count down and the thing going off. As for the question, if Guam and the Marianas would be able to see any signs of the launch in space? If you're lucky and you see something, I mean, you might be, but, uh, you know, I don't know what time that would be. It doesn't hurt to keep looking up, although I think we got rain in the forecast for tonight, so you might have to look through some holes in the clouds yeah. if, if you're lucky. What are you going to say? And of course, a launch to watch. Hannah, would you want to go to the moon? I think I'll stay at the anchor desk. No yeah. thanks. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit too far. All right, now we have more than one way for you to watch the launch. You can go to this story on KUAM.com and click the link there. You can also watch the NBC News special report on the Artemis 1 launch tonight at 10.30 p.m. The special report airs on KUAM TV 8. Well, stay tuned. Next is Dave Delgado with sports. And still to come on your news leader, your birthday shout outs from the Cold Stone Creamery Birthday Club. You're watching KUAM. We've made a lot of breakfasts. And along the way, we noticed something was missing. A warm cinnamon roll for breakfast or with breakfast. A fluffy blueberry muffin from the drive through you're already driving through. A glazed apple fritter, which might find its way into your coffee. These are options every breakfast haver should have. And now they do. Meet the new bakery sweets at McDonald's. Ba -da -ba -ba -ba. Keep the smile on your face The moments you can't replay And I'll be around Wherever life takes you, we're always here for you Calvo's Insurance Count on us for life I want my streaming. I want my TV. Ooh, streaming TV. Switch between live TV and your favorite streaming apps with DTV Plus from Docomo Pacific. 
watch your shows and multiple devices all at the same time, all from your home Wi-Fi. No cable lines, no hassle, or savings for only $35 a month with your Link Bundle. DTV Plus, your cable TV on Wi-Fi. Ooh, streaming TV. KUAM Sports is brought to you by Docomo Pacific. Better together. What's up, Guam? Dave Delgado here for KUAM Sports. Thanks for watching. We get the show started tonight with some women's soccer highlights from the GFA National Training Center. Check it out. Now for some men's futsal news, Quality Distributors FC claimed the 2022 Budweiser Men's Futsal League title 3-1 over the Islanders FC. Brandon Ayuan scored all three goals in the win for Quality Distributors FC. In the league's third place match, the Sidekick SC defeated Napa Rovers FC 2-1 for the 2022 bronze finish. Napu Mesa and Jose Rangel each scored once for the winning team. The University of Guam updated their champions of Triton Athletics wall in the UOG Cavo Fieldhouse on a live version of the Triton Sports Zone. The podcast featured interviews with Victor Consaga, the UOG sports photographer whose pictures are used for the champions wall, as well as interviews with Katrina Santos, a new women's basketball champion on the wall, and Logan Hopkins, a former men's basketball champion who now will attempt to return to the wall after being off island for two years. KUAM Sports is brought to you by Docomo Pacific. Better together. During the pandemic, um, that's the time that I was were closed for one year. So the, the payment that me and my daughter we bring home, let's just say 500 a month or 600, my rent is 850. When I contact the rental assistant, they say that I'm approved. I really so happy. Kiri so tabur, mari di god, kiri so yeri god. Ren me de governor Lulian Guerrero and just refer yeri arabas ikerai. Ren ke begin arinis mi dori arabas ese bani filipin. Ren took panape. Um, any kind of lasillality, he really, she really helped us out for the for the rent. Kiri so tapur, God God bless, Governor. Yes. This ad was paid for by the Department of Administration using federal funds. Guam was once home to over twelve native species of forest birds each with their own unique sound, color, and role to play in our ecosystem. However, the arrival of the brown tree snake has threatened their existence. Today, only three of these species still exist in the wild. But what was once lost can be restored. Join the Department of Agriculture's efforts to restore our ecosystem 
It is only through partnerships with various organizations and the community that we can give our native birds a future. Support snake suppression. Want a real taste of New York? The Big New Yorker is back with a big, bold taste rolled into 16 inches of foldable crust. It's handmade to perfection with a sweet marinara sauce and your favorite topping. And at 30% larger than our large, the Big New Yorker is only $10.99 for carryout. Bring together your family and friends for a Big New Yorker party. Each pizza is just $10.99 for carryout. The Big New Yorker, so close you can taste it. Only at your Island Pizza Hut. Welcome back. We wrap up the show with your birthday shout outs. Here's Jason Salas. Happy birthday on August 29th to David P. Carroll. Happy birthday to you from the Carroll family. Of course. David, we hope you have a fantastic birthday. Juan Vicente Kenga, happy birthday to you, son. We love you dearly from your family in Guam and Hawaii. And belated birthday wishes going out to Ignacia Dorothea, a.k.a. TT. Happy second birthday, TT. We love you so much, sweetheart, for your birthday on August the 27th. Your family is very proud of you. Andrew J. Magopnia celebrates birthday number four, or celebrated, I should say, on Sunday. Mommy and Daddy hope you have the greatest day ever, and they say we love you so much. And also Sunday blowing out the candles was Deshaun Tay Warren. Happy birthday, Deshaun Tay. We hope you have a great and blessed one, son. With all the love in the world, Nissa, Jay, Drew, and Grandma. And you can be a part of our Code Stone Crew Marie Birthday Club. Just check out KUAM.com. And that's our show. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Nick Delgado. And I'm Hannah Bonzo. And please stay safe, Bob. Hey guys, and welcome to uh, a segment of Decision 22 where we sit down with uh, young voters and to find out you know, their take on uh, issues here on Guam. Welcome. We want to thank Coffee Shop for having us here uh, today. And it's Victoria Spilan with uh, One Micronesia, and I'm Tomas Milani with Pacific Matters for this special episode, uh, like Vic said, of Decision 2022. And now we're joined with two young Guam voters, uh, Stephanie Lorenzo and Farron Tyron. And so, Stephanie, we'll start with you. Uh, tell us a little bit about yourself and uh, your ties to Guam. Uh, thank you. So my name is Stephanie Lorenzo. I'm the executive director of uh, Malawan Rights, and I'm also the speaker of the Guam in Congress. All right, and Farron? I'm a social media dude. I have an Instagram account called The Guam Guy. I also have a podcast, very vainly called The Guam Guy Show Podcast. I think it is all those words. I do a bunch of environmental things and extreme cleanups and so on. All right, and so I know there are issues you care about all year round. This year just happens to be an election year. And uh, Stephanie, we'll start with you again. What issues matter to you the most this election year? So for me, it's Guam's, accessible, I'm sorry, Guam's accessibility to reproductive health care. Um, a part of FAM rights, we advocate for accurate, fact-based, and data-driven sexual education curriculum in all of our schools. We advocate for accessible menstrual hygiene products, and we advocate for all reproductive medical procedures to include abortions. Actually, fair. Uh, I don't want to say it necessarily matters to me the most, but it's one of the least spoken about issues, I would say, and it is, you know, caring for our environment and uh, looking at uh, incumbents and potential uh, potential new senators and politicians uh, getting into the field and seeing who has to say about um, environmental matters. All right, Farron, just sticking with you first, uh, 
uh, are there any candidates? Uh, are there any? Are there anything? Is there anything in particular that you're looking for in the candidates who are running? And are there any particular races that you're following closely? How do you approach that? Honestly, uh, and if any candidate says anything about the environment, that anything of substance, where it shows it's not just you know, like a two sentence thing, they'll just kind of throw out not a whole. This is a lot of things. It's very important. You know, something that shows that they put any thought into it. Um, that already is like a plus mark in my book, just because again, it's one of these issues that's just not talked about uh, at, at any length, uh, unfortunately. That said, I don't want to say it's the most important or most depressing thing. There's there's more urgent things, you know, for our island and for our people. But uh, just just to show that it's at least on their radar and that there's some sincerity and there's some thought that's put into it. Uh, I, I could give some specifics, but uh, let's, uh, maybe we'll pass it back. <laughs> right, and, uh, but in terms of any particular races, are you, are you following any of them? Or I am following all of them. I'm not going to comment on any particular candidates. I'm just, <laughs> I'm gonna stay on, I'll just stay on the issues. Uh, I want to believe that you know, some candidates and just some incumbents, for example, if I disagreed with them vehemently on particular issues, I'd like to think we'd be able to work together on environmental ones. And Stephanie, for you, any particular issues or candidates? Um, so for me, the particular issue that I'm looking for in these candidates is what is their stance on Wuhan's um, accessibility to reproductive health care? Um, we, I want to look at their platforms to see like really what their stance is and that if legislation was to happen and if they were to be elected, will they introduce legislation that supports and reforms and advances um, a person's, a, a, sorry, a person who's able to get pregnant, will they advance their reproductive rights or, you know, have more accessible reproductive health care. Um, I also want to, kind of like what you said earlier, like kind of with like they have a few topics or platforms that they're looking at. So more on the diversity and inclusivity. I know that some candidates are really prioritizing their own platform, which is okay, it's fine. But at the end of the day, if they are elected, I want to be able to see and be confident in my vote that they are willing to work across the board, no matter the party, no matter the topic. And is it a matter of candidates for you, or also party, or what, do you, what are you looking at? So for me, it's really across the board. Um, I'm a strong Democrat. I, you know, in terms of the candidacy and what races I'm following closely, I'm personally following the gubernatorial race. Um, for me, my Godzu, as we call it, is the Leon Guerrero Tenorio administration. Um, and just from a young person's perspective and a young professional, I've seen them invest not only in the teachers but in the law enforcement community. I've seen them invest, and also in our students too. I mean, um, I don't know if you guys have seen, but we had over 12,000 students in the Guam summer youth employment program. So with that administration, they were able to give, one, the kids the institutional knowledge just by for their experience, and then pay them. Because if I was to go, for example, right, if one of those kids, one of the students, wanted to pursue like a job or a career in that field, you have to go to school. And the majority of the times, those internships, you have to pay for it because it's a part of your degree. But they were able to get that experience, be like in the department, in the agencies for free, and they got paid too. So. That's something that I've seen them really invest back into our community. Every person in this world is unique. I'm a celebrity makeup artist and a content creator. I'm the vice president of our company and a very proud grandma. I'm a Filipino and I am seven years old. I would say I am always an eternal student. I define beauty as being empowered, just feeling beautiful as who you are. I am a Chamorro, born and raised in Guam. It is valuing our differences, respecting one another, and sharing a deep love for our island. It's what makes us one people.
Guam's auto appearance specialist, Elegant Reflections, has been providing the automotive industry with professional detailing and car care products at its highest quality from complete detailing, full interior detailing, exterior detailing, headlamp restoration, hand washing, seat and carpet shampoo, engine degreasing, undercarriage cleaning, paint sealant, fabric protection, paint oxidation removal, and so much more. Visit us at our new location. Call 646-5555 for an appointment. Elegant Reflections, Guam's auto appearance specialist. Over 20 years of experience. My classic and spicy popcorn chicken with 100% all-white meat chicken and good, good sauce. Pop it like it's hot. Pop it like it's hot. Pop it like it's hot. Pop my classic and spicy 50-50 popcorn chicken combo. Order on the Jack app today. Off you guys, and we're back. It's Decision 22, and we're teaming up. It's one of my QJ teaming up with Pacific Matters uh, to, to find out, you know, what the younger voters uh, think about different issues. And for now, I guess we're going to start tackling this next one, which is climate change, which is it's affecting uh, the whole world, but especially our, our tiny islands. So uh, what do you guys think about that? Right, and so climate change and even larger, just the environment gener uh, generally. Uh, Farron, we'll start with you. Um, the Guam guy, uh, it's what you're known for, literally delving into the issues uh, here in Guam's water. So um, w what's important to know about the environment when it comes to um, you know, th this, this year and, and moving forward? It's, it's not just this year, it's every year going forward and it's every year going backward. Uh, so like you're saying, uh, I literally dive uh, for trash, uh, my friends and I, um, Will, Nate, and Lonnie Sabla, they or they've organized I think five um, annual Mariso Pier project underwater cleanups and they started out when they were 19 years old. It's actually a really beautiful thing and I've, I've been with them from the start just volunteering, help, helping however I can. And uh, also we go rappelling off of Oka Point Cliff like with rock climbing gear full on and getting trash out of there. And I was talking with uh, Senator uh, Clint Mergell about this before and we're, we're, we have a lot of this trash all around the island and so we have a major littering problem. and. Some of the things we're noticing is, you know, as we continue to put in these efforts, we are making really big visible differences. So I'm really proud of my friends, my team, that we keep going back and we can actually see the changes happen in front of our eyes. And we're noticing that, you know, a lot of the trash we get is, is quite old. So our efforts, uh, I'm sorry, what we're doing and and uh, the cleaning up of the trash. Some of this trash is so old it predates any kind of conservation, any kind of recycling messages or anything like that. And so I just want to say that their progress is absolutely possible, and it just takes just some people to try and make a difference. Uh, and that said, you know, littering is an issue, um, dumping is another big issue, and so I'll just be especially looking at. I know the, there's currently an initiative right now to make trash pickup free again, and you know it comes out of taxes, of course, but functionally it's it's free, right? You don't have to write a check anywhere, and. Uh, anyone who has the, anyone who puts that through will, will have a lot of big check marks in my book, uh, just just to relieve that burden off of our people um, and make it so that everybody can get trash. Like when I was growing up, it wasn't a thought. We had the uh, we had our 32 gallon or whatever it was size uh, trash cans out in front, and we had a little cage for it to keep the animals out. And so they used to come and pick it up every week. So whoever makes that happen again, I will love them till the day I die. <laughs> Uh, other big issues, um, we have uh, wildfires. We have, I think, hundreds of wildfires every year. Every wildfire is caused by a person, and there's not been a single prosecution. No one, it's literally arson. It is literally arson, and no one is, to my knowledge, has ever been arrested for it or brought to trial or to, to pay for the crime. Um, that said, uh, of course, I, I, uh, if, if that people feel like that's part of their culture, I can, I can kind of understand that, but it's something we got to get over. Um, respect is also a big part of our culture, and we shouldn't be respecting each other. We shouldn't be burning each other's backyards. Um, if you just drive around, I think you've probably seen this from back in the old days, um, there's just some derelict sailboats stuck up on the reef. How is that allowed to happen? And they're stuck on there for years. Um, I, I, could, I, could, I guess I could go on and on. Uh, but so that's why I'm just saying I, I have a guess a fairly low bar like just show me any candidate or incumbent show me really anything of substance um, that I, I might be able to even talk about in my own uh, personal capacity and uh, before going to Stephanie I guess what is the importance of documenting it and sharing it like like you do like you know what, what are you hoping people 
do based on your on your videos and, and your experiences? I'm just hoping people will care. So I fully I fully understand. I I, I, I had a hard uh, early adult life. I used to ride a bicycle around the island because I couldn't afford a car. Guatemala the spot didn't exist back then, and so <laughs> so no one would approve me for a loan. And so I remember, I remember survival. And so I, I don't, I'm not asking it for any, for the, for the environment to be anyone's number one cause. I'm just asking for it to be on the list. So I just hope that people put it on the, on the list of their concerns. And you know, and you know, even though, even if it's down the line behind survival, I just hope people put it on their list and candidates and incumbents put it on their list, and that everybody just makes some effort. And just me and some random friends, we've made some visible differences. Uh, in a couple spots around the island, and multiply that by everybody. <laughs> that would be amazing. And Stephanie, where is it on your list? And what's on your list? <laughs> Did it just get a little higher? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. For sure. And, and so for me, and you know, the topic of climate change, I think that it's not the big differences. It's the small, everyday swaps that are going to help move us forward and help give us progress. I mean, we see nowadays we have Numa Loba Refillery, so we have younger people recognizing the importance of caring for our environment. And just again, those little everyday swaps, they're going to, like you said, multiply that by everyone on this island. We're going to see a drastic difference. All right, great. Uh, Farron, did you want to add anything in closing to this? Uh, I'll be looking forward to seeing the results of Bill's, uh, I think it's one. 162 and 165, uh, Sabina Senator Sabina Perez and Speaker Therese Terlahi put those out um, in response to the Marble Cave uh, disaster. One of those is to allow, to remove the cap on the maximum fines that Guam BPA can assess. And then the other one is to uh, allow EPA to use those monies to uh, hire enough people and for and for their lawyer fees to actually protect us and enforce environmental protection on on, on the island. So I, I, I don't know if those. I try to I try to look it up and see if there's any movement on that. I uh, haven't seen anything yet, uh, and so that's something uh, I'll be looking for and something I, everybody should be paying attention to because everyone universally was angry that the maximum fine assessed. Um, <clears throat> was 125,000 even though it was assessed to be something like 14 million and so hopefully people will follow up with that and try to see it to fruition. on your tablet or any device with DTV Plus from Docomo Pacific. Watch live channels or stream from your favorite apps on any device, all from your home Wi-Fi. No cable lines, no hassle, more savings. All for only $35 a month with your link bundle. DTV Plus, your cable TV on Wi-Fi. Ooh, TV on tab. Do you ever wonder how your favorite products make their way into your local stores? Most arrive on state-of-the-art mats and vessels that transport containers of food, household items, equipment and supplies into the islands every week. Because we know that you depend on us, we work closely with our partners to ensure that our shipments arrive on time, all the time, so you can find your favorite products when you need them. We transport the region's most precious cargo that supports successful businesses and promotes a better quality of life for our families. Matson is proud to have been the hometown shipping carrier for Guam, the CNMI, and Micronesia for the past 25 years. And you can count on us to be here for generations to come.
double that melty cheese you crave with double the steak is back at Taco Bell. The double steak grilled cheese burrito. Hi for you guys, and we're back. It's Decision 22 and a special edition. It's one Mike Ninja teaming up with uh, Pacific Matters. Just uh, sit down with, with friends and just find out you know, what their take on uh, with this election and the, the issue, like I said, that surrounds it. Um, you know, guys, let's talk about it. What, what have you guys heard uh, out there from your friends and family about you know, issues and this upcoming elections, the candidates themselves, and, and stuff like that? So having young people be active in politics mm -hmm. or being interested in voting is really such a niche group. Nowadays, we see younger people trying to vote with their parents or vote the way that their parents do. They kind of follow the line of you know what their families kind of went, and also like what their parties are too. So for me, I want to see you know, more young people, more motivated to get out there and to learn more information about the candidates and also for the candidates to provide their platforms on a more accessible basis. I know that there is social media, there is like the print ads, and there's like the media ads as well, but kind of just being more out in the community. We only really see them like for waving, which is effective enough to get the logo and the colors in our heads, but really like getting to know our candidates. Um, I know it kind of stopped because of the pandemic, but those forums from the Guam Medical Association, from the University of Guam, PSSA, those forums are opportunities for the community and especially for young people to find out, well, what candidates are we going to support in this election because they, our values and our issues kind of align, you know? Mm -hmm. Just to follow up on the original, one of the issues that you're passionate about with the reproductive rights, is it fair to say that um, that uh, hot button issue um, reinvigorated a younger voter base in law? Yes, absolutely. So um, with the introduction of Bill 291, I want to say that it really did awaken the sleeping dragon because we had people from Guam, people from Choice, and they're kind of like the aunties, the more professional, but then we had family on rights. And those two groups combined were able to mobilize over 150 people. We had three protests all together. Um, I want to say that there was maybe 850 testimonies in opposition um, for Bill 291. So it does show in the community that, you know, we, as a whole, as an island community, we respect a person's right to choose, mm -hmm. and we want to be able to safeguard that. And so, would you say that you're trying to sustain that momentum, or how, absolutely, how you... absolutely? So, family yeah. rights. Um, right now, we're in the process of becoming an NPO, but we really are committed to advancing Guam's access to reproductive health care. We're trying to identify um, individuals from off island because we do know that we are, we have an OBGYN and just women's health care, um, women's health care. OBGYN shortage, right? So we're trying to entice them to come here to practice and, you know, I, and to be able to have and to perform this medical procedure, which is, you know, abortions. And Farron, what are you hearing in your circle? You know, it's kind of funny now that you pointed out, like, on social media, it's, it's mostly the same people just going at each other's throats. I'm, I'm just seeing a lot of ugliness. I don't know if this is unusual or normal. Maybe I'm paying attention more now or, or just tuned into the field more now, but I'm saying um, just, yeah, a lot of ugliness. Uh, and it, it makes me it makes me sad. Like I, I didn't know we were capable of this. Um, so maybe I'm just naive or something, but uh, I, I'm just looking around and, and seeing a lot of negativity, a lot of people hurling stuff at each other, a lot of, let's say, posing. Let's, People will like like with the with the abortion issue or reproductive rights issue, however you want to be phrased, pro choice, pro life. Saying so let's have a good faith discussion, and then they throw out the phrase like murdering babies. Well, that's not a good faith that's not a good faith discussion. And um, and so I, I I it's a very debatable issue. I'm I'm I am pro choice uh, myself, uh, and I can see merits to to both sides, uh, but. That said, it does seem to be that the bigger, more pressing issue of uh, uh, this election is, is, is exactly this uh, women's rights or human rights issue. And uh, yeah, I would just wish we could be more civil in our discussion, um, not just, not, not, not even the candidates, just us, like how we talk to each other. Uh, and you know, it, it, I'm, I'm just understand everybody has opinions and understand that your candidate 
uh, may not win. <laughs> and we're still going to have to work to each other, work with each other, excuse me, we'll have to fight each other for the next two years or four years, depending on which race we're talking about, uh, and just recognize that we're still going to be one island after this. <laughs> And uh, Stephanie, if we could just go back to uh, your original point about voting along family lines, if you're comfortable answering, you know, um, I, I've been voting in Rwanda since then, I don't vote here, full disclosure, uh, but I do, you know, remember those family visits that they would make, and uh, they would assume if you're a household of five and you visited that household, then you've got five votes, right? Yeah. Um, but do you think that conversation is changing?